Hi everyone, I'm Christine Davis and this is the 805 Focus. It's where we feature the people, the events and the topics that matter to the South Coast. You know, we're really fortunate here to have some incredible non-profit organisations. One of them being the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County. For the past 30 years they've been serving the needy of the South Coast and now they're taking their work to a whole new level. With me today to discuss the topic is Bonnie Campbell. She's the Director of Community Impact at the Food Bank and Misha Karbelnig, Food Bank's Development Manager. Thank you both for joining us here today. Well, firstly, I'd like to start out by finding out what exactly is a food bank? That's a great question. Thank you for bringing it up. I think there's a lot of misconceptions. Food banking started when someone realized the grocery stores were throwing away a lot of food that was perfectly edible, but because of their need to get rid of it in a timely fashion, they started food banking. So it really began with grocery rescue and has grown over the decades into something that it is today, which is a national network of food banks in, in the counties that are providing nonprofit partners within their community food, nutritious, healthy produce and, and uh, canned items and all variety of food and milk and eggs and everything that you could need. And then the nonprofit partners distribute the food to their clientele. So food banking isn't a direct to client services. You don't shop like at a Costco but we have this vast network of over 300 nonprofit partners. As you said, we have a beautiful county full of amazing nonprofits, and we're fortunate to partner with them and have been for over 30 years. So that's kind of the beginning of food banking. It's working with the community through the nonprofits to ensure that the clients who are food insecure or don't have enough to cover the month for their family have a place to go to receive those uh, those foods that they need. And how did the Santa Barbara Food Bank or the Santa Barbara County Food Bank come about? It started um, uh, before I was alive. <laughs> 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 Not actually, but it, it did start from those early roots and just in the past six years under the leadership of Eric Tolkien, our uh, chief executive officer, we've changed the direction from what used to be grocery rescue, what used to be a measure of success was how many pounds of food you got in the door and how many pounds of food you were able to push out. That's not a sustainable um, model and it does nothing to end hunger. And the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County's mission is to end hunger and transform the health of our community. So the old model of pounds in, pounds out is now changing and we are part of this exciting change to where we are measuring the impact that we and our nonprofit partners are having community by community with measurable outcomes to show we are moving the needle on ending hunger. We are shortening those lines. We are making the meal gap shrink and shrink till eventually we reach our goal. That's wonderful because I hear that the, the number of people in Santa Barbara County over recent years that have been needing help from places like the food bank has increased. That's right. Last year we put out the food necessary for eight and a half million meals. We're reaching one in four members of our county through our partner nonprofits. There are 330 nonprofits that we work with. So it's really an incredible number of people that we're feeding every year through the county. Wonderful. Um, now, you were saying that some of the food comes from restaurants and produce places that you know provided and donate you also purchase some of the the produce is that correct that's absolutely right we have a wide food resourcing options of course we have the huge agricultural community in the north county we have wonderful relationships with farmers and uh, with uh, the agricultural growers that also donate to us and that we purchase from we have Grocery Rescue, which uh, we have partners countywide that every single day we pick up um, breads and things like that and, and bring them back. We purchase food because uh, you probably have noticed when you've gone to the store, if you bought peanut butter anytime soon or tuna, the prices have gone up. Well, we've been in three years of drought and a lot of things have happened in the nation to different crops, one of them peanuts. And now those costs have put them far out of the reach 
of people who are low income and we take our resources and purchase those nutrient dense um, wonderful foods for people so we, we also belong to California, California Association of Food Banks which leverages some of our buying power and to kind of put it in perspective for um, everybody viewing one dollar that you give to the food bank we can turn that into seventeen dollars worth of buying power it's much beyond what an individual or a nonprofit could do and I really have to say that a large focus of what we do now is making sure people have access to fresh produce over fifty percent of the of the millions of meals that we help provide uh, fifty percent is produce and we subsidize that we the food bank of Santa Barbara County 100 percent so we do have to purchase produce and we do have wonderful relationships with the agricultural community and we have a backyard bounty program where people who are growing food can donate and we accept donations and because of all of that wonderful connectiveness over 50 percent of what we give out is fresh fruit and produce and we never charge anyone for that that's that's just amazing that's fabulous and with talking uh, about that, I believe your operations team has broken some, some records as far as food banks go. Tell me a little bit about that, Misha. That's right. Our operations team is very efficient. They're actually leading in the nation in terms of the ability to source food, put it back out into the community rapidly and through uh, nonprofits that are all throughout the county. So we're really leveraging existing networks and working efficiently in terms of being able to source that food and put it back out to people in need as immediately as possible. So Santa Barbara is number one in the country? For efficiency, that's right. That's fantastic, something to be very proud of. I just think if you just say Santa Barbara, you know, the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County is number one in the nation. Yes, so, you know, we could just <laughs> leave it like that. We could just <laughs> leave it like that. Because we are leading in so many areas when it comes to improving health within our community. Yes. This is a new initiative for food banks, uh, and we really are here in Santa Barbara County at, are at the, the tip of the spear when it comes to connecting poverty and access to food as being part of the food or as part of the health safety net. Mm. So food banks aren't typically thought of when you're in a conversation about poverty or health and human services need or um, people access to health care, but we truly are part of the health safety net because you cannot improve the health of the community if there is not adequate access to nutritious um, food uh, that's affordable. So we are changing the name of the game when it comes to food banks don't just push out food. We partner to enable people to learn and become educated about nutrition, to help them to be able to stretch their food dollar by helping them with CalFresh application assistance. It used to be known as food stamps. Mm -hmm. And in California, it's now called CalFresh. And if every person in Santa Barbara County who qualified for CalFresh did and were receiving benefits, that would mean $80 million would be coming into this county. That's huge. So this is that another is. part of our initiative is to make sure that when we're reaching out and our partners are reaching out, we're helping the clients, the end users, maximize benefits that they should be receiving and be, be a part of that, helping them lift themselves out of poverty and gain nutritional education and independence. It's a very empowering model that we're using that, that takes people coming together as peers as opposed to, I'm a charity, you're a receiver, you know. I was, yeah, I was just gonna say that must be very empowering for for the recipients because I believe that part of the nutrition push that you've had has also been an education push, something that other food banks in the country may not have. Tell me a little bit about how you guys are different from other food banks and tell me a little bit about what that process is like. Absolutely, you touched on a really important part of our mission which is education, nutrition education. And we find it's really important to start at a young age, so we have created a suite of programs called Feed the Future Programming. It starts in preschool with introducing toddlers and young children to produce and how accessible it is and how delicious it is. And we have volunteers go into the schools 
teach them about it with some fun stories, and then the students taste the food as well. So they get to be right up close with the produce and familiar with it and enjoy it. And the cycle really continues up through elementary school with our kids' farmer's market program and our healthy school pantry, which also reaches out through these kids' families. The families are also welcome to participate in the program, get some fresh produce, every month and also see recipe demos, healthy recipes made in front of them by volunteer chefs. And the suite of programs continues through high school, again with the hands-on nutrition education. It's made to be very accessible, very friendly, and also with that budget mindset that produce is not out of reach for people, that it can be affordable and it is a very healthy option for lifelong you know, wellness, and that's a real cornerstone of our mission. We want to empower people with this nutrition education at all stages of life, so they're, you know, empowered to lead a healthy life. Absolutely. And with this new emphasis, what sort of feedback have you had? How has the, the programs gone so far, the new ones that you've been working on? Well, we have stories upon stories, and, and we do have them on our website, which is foodbanksbc.org, and you can always spend as much time as you like going through that. Personally, I just want to share a quick story. The Healthy School Pantry that Misha was talking about, we have them all out throughout the community. It's nationally award-winning, the program, which was created by our food bank, and we've uh, we partner with um, so many different people that take on the role. So as resources shrink in the nonprofit sector, we as the uh, food bank don't rely on all our staff resources to make these programs go forward. It's all a train the trainer. And so we empower people to take these on and make them their own. So I've visited, lot, obviously, seven of them. And I was at one um, when I first started working and I walked in and it's set up in a circular fashion so that families will come in the door and they'll just sign a little paper and then they, they will walk and the first thing they'll see is a CalFresh application assistance. There'll be a food demonstration with recipes in Spanish and English. There'll be health screenings. So there'll be different composting classes the public health department does with us. And then they go and see the food that's available and they pick out the food that they want and then at the very end of the um, very end of the line there's some grocery rescue like you know a birthday cake that they might not be able to buy mm. and the children are playing and there's activities for the kids it's it's a family fair mm. is really what it's like so you want to think about empowering this is not just a, a food distribution where people are lining up around the block this is a community event led by the community itself um, and gives us a wonderful opportunity to provide that education piece and we also have an education program which we call Nutrition Advocates and these are usually the women, um, the matriarchs of the family who want to learn more. We provide uh, some formalized education for them. They become nutrition advocates and they come to the Healthy School Pantry and they're able peer to peer to explain what is this, what is this vegetable? How do you cook it? And when you're cooking a meal, if I don't have pinto beans, can you substitute that with something? And the nutritional advocates are having those conversations all during the Healthy School Pantry, and it's extremely powerful, very empowerful. And then they're taking that information back to the schools. And their families, and their faith communities, and it's very, you know, it's very powerful when it's coming from a peer. And like you said, it's creating that family feel and that community feel, so these individuals that are needy aren't feeling like they're standing in line waiting for a plate of food. It's, it's like, hey, I'm not alone, and there's families like me, and this is, you know, I'm learning a lot, and soon I'll be able to do some of this myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going through the line, I'm talking to people and, and saying hello, and one of the little babies is handing me one of their cookies, and everybody is smiling, and you just know this this is this is right this this settles into your soul it did to mine that we are making a difference in people's lives and that we need to cast this net as far as we possibly can and replicate it it's replicatable throughout the country and we we are part of that and we're proud very proud to be a part of that 
That's right. Other food banks are excited to take the model that we've established and take it into their communities because, like Bonnie says, it really builds up everyone who participates, the volunteers, the nutrition advocates who are out in the community as peers, the people that are attending, the children and their families, and then volunteers in the community that lead the program out at the schools. They are also built up because they know they're bettering the community together. So clearly the feedback has been extremely positive, both locally and throughout the country. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. right. It must be wonderful to know that it started in Santa Barbara and mm. that on the other side of the country they're looking at you guys as, as a model. It's true. Um, it is exciting and mm. it's, it's a lot of responsibility, but um, we are part of a, a network of food banks uh, that, that have wonderful communication. So food banks that are still doing the pounds in, pounds out, have an opportunity to come together and learn from us. So if they want to change their model for a healthier um, outcome for the community model that we're doing here, we share our tools. It's, it's really kind of a beautiful thing. Usually in the nonprofit sector, there's, there's siloing simply because whatever your mission is, that's what you do and you're not thinking about too much of how you connect with the other. We're in, the, in that position of we have 336 nonprofit partners. We know what they're doing. Let us connect them to better leverage how we can educate the community and then share that with the food banks across, um, across the nation. And it's, it is very exciting to see other food banks get excited about this idea and ask questions about how they can adopt it. And mm -hmm. it's wonderful. That's fabulous. I wanted to hear about the uh, local, the, the local produce that you're using. As you said, you're using some bigger organizations and you're using some, some real homegrown mm -hmm. uh, organizations. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we're really lucky in that we have very wonderful relationships with a lot of growers all over the county that when they have excess produce or produce that they may not bring to market but is perfectly delicious and ready to go out to people who are hungry, they give us a call and we pick it up or they deliver it to us. Um, we have at least 60 um, such relationships with local growers that think of us as a place to donate and of course there are countless more uh, generous donors with backyards with uh, orchards or you know fruit and vegetables uh, that they're growing that they just don't uh, think they will eat and they know if they give us a call that we'll be able to put that out to people who are in need so we're really lucky in that regard but with the drought that Bonnie mentioned it's been going on three years now it does put us in a difficult spot because our generous donors and growers have a more difficult position in terms of donating produce. So oftentimes they're not able to donate as much or as frequently as they used to. So because of that we're looking to those backyard growers and donors who understand how much produce matters to our community to step up during the drought and assist us so that we're still able to put out half of our poundage as produce and uh, shine a spotlight on that for the community. And also I just want to add that we have really changed the way we've done business to buy local, buy fresh, mm. so that we are keeping the food that we are growing in this rich agricultural county within the county. And that's also a change and it, it's, it's kind of revolution. It sounds like, well, of course you do that, but the traditional food banking there's networks and there's a lot of shipping and people going back and forth with this produce and I don't have carrots, do you have broccoli? But we're really working with our agricultural partners and uh, nonprofit partners to keep this produce that we're growing in our county here in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you guys are very appreciative of this produce and it must be wonderfully rewarding for the local, the local farmers. Yes, they're, they're wonderful. I mean, they understand what it means to be able to put this beautiful and delicious produce back into our community, keep it right here where people need it. And so they're just fantastic. We have you know, years and years of uh, relationships going back with these farmers and they you know, deeply understand what it means. And so we continue to work with them even through the drought and let them know you know, in this lean time, whatever they are able to donate to us makes a big difference. And uh, we just really are grateful for that. 
And every time we invite those, anybody who wants to can come on a tour to either our Santa Barbara warehouse or our Santa Maria warehouse. And something I love to highlight when people come on tours is when we go into the cooler where all the produce is, I point out, see, there's Driscoll's, and look at these strawberries, and look at this butter lettuce, and you know that's just from, up from Santa Maria, and this is these are our local partners, and I, I would encourage uh, all of all of your um, viewers if they haven't ever toured a food bank that they should get in touch with us and come visit the warehouse, and we'll give them a tour. It really is an eye-opening experience. You can hear facts and figures and us describe what, but part of it is because I work at the Santa Barbara warehouse and I get to see what's going on all the time. So uh, just visit our website, foodbanksbc.org, and contact us and we'll take you on a tour just any old time. It would be wonderful to be able to do that for people. Fantastic. Um, you also have a number of events and programs you have year round. Tell me a little bit about that, Misha. That's right. We look to the community, in addition to the produce donations and support, we look to them to attend our fundraising events. We have a number all throughout the year. A really popular one is our Empty Bowls event. We have it actually at three locations, here in Santa Barbara, in Lompoc, and also in Santa Maria. And it's all throughout the fall months. You can go to our website, foodbanksbc.org, to see the dates. Um, but it's a really, it's a, it's a grounding event. It's a chance for everyone to come together as a community. They pick up a handmade bowl that is donated by local ceramicists. And then they enjoy a uh, bowl of soup that's made by restaurants in town that donate their soup and they have a piece of bread. And they sit together and enjoy this, this meal. And the proceeds of their ticket um, purchased to attend the event goes directly back to the food bank and feeding people in need. But it's, it's a really lovely event all about the community, the sense of coming together that this is something we can accomplish, we can together end hunger. And so it's a, it's a really beautiful, beautiful event all throughout the county. We also have two other really remarkable events, a food and wine event in the um, summer months called Fork and Cork Classic. It's a new one that, uh, again, involves people in the community with sampling wine and food donated by local uh, restaurants and wineries. And of course, 100% of the proceeds go directly to the food bank and feeding those in need. And um, our final event is our Table of Life Gala in the fall, which is another chance for people to learn about the nutritional aspects of the food bank and celebrate the fact that we're all here in this together, making a difference and feeding those in need. That's wonderful. With all the outreach you do, you've been extremely successful and continue to be, but financial donations are still, are still needed, aren't they? Absolutely. I would have to say if, if um, someone wanted to help the most immediately in the simplest way, would be to donate, donate directly to the food bank because we have such leveraging on the purchasing power of food. By every dollar given to us, we can buy seventeen dollars worth of food. So definitely, that's it remains number one. And what else can volunteers do if they want to help with the food bank? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a list. Oh, a list. Oh my goodness. I know our time is limited, but I did want to mention as the director of community impact. My role is to take the information that we as the food bank have collected around where the highest areas of poverty exist within our county and the least amount of food ac access exist and focus our attention on creating groups in those geographic areas of need to come together to end hunger and improve health outcomes. For instance, Lompoc is the most impoverished one of our communities. Almost 50% of the children live in poverty and uh, don't have enough food to get through the day. That's staggering. So we've started a Lompoc Impact Group and we are gathering people from the community, our partner member agencies, people from the faith community, local government, local business, the hospitals, and we are starting a working group to set some simple goals. What will improve uh, the access to food in Lompoc and do it together. So the, the impact that we will have, we're going to measure. We have tools and evaluation pieces so that we can know, are we actually moving the needle? 
Are we improving access to food, nutritious, healthy food? And are we improving the health of our community? So it's, it's brand new, it's really, really exciting. And the, the Lompoc Impact Group has just, just launched, but there are many cities, um, the west side of Santa Barbara, the northwest of Santa Maria, Los Alamos, Guadalupe, Nucuyama, Isla Vista. These are all geographic areas that we're going to be replicating this, as well as initiative areas. And the, the initiatives we're facing now are diabetes. Diabetes goes hand in hand with poverty because of lack of food access. So we are um, starting to work with healthcare partners in a brand new way to address the issue of diabetes as it relates to hunger. And uh, you can find out more on foodbanksbc.org. But thanks for giving me the time to bring up these new exciting impact groups. No, that's wonderful because I know there's a lot of people who'd be watching today saying, how can I help? They're doing great work, but they must need help. And as you said, there's these volunteer opportunities mm -hmm. and donations are always needed. And one more time, what's the website? foodbanksbc.org. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much, Misha and Bonnie, for joining us today. Thank you. And we wish you every success with all of the programs. And we hope that more people have become aware of the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County as a result of today's conversation. Thanks to 805 Focus, more people will know. Thank you. You're welcome. And our website here at TV Santa Barbara is tvsb.tv. Why not drop us a line and tell us the sorts of stories you'd like to see on our show? I'm Christine Davis, and we hope to see you next time on the 805 Focus.